Look at this. This is amazing. Now, buddy, this right here is the NASA AD-1, a special jet airplane that was built in the late 70s, and it can do a very simple trick. It looks like this. Yes, everybody, it has a twistable wing, and it can fly like that. Yes, everybody, in today's video, we're going to finally talk about the oblique wing design concept again, which works just like the swing wing design you can see on lots of jet fighters, like this Dassault Mirage. You know, it's actually a brilliant idea, a swept wing like this. You have a slow mode used for landings and takeoffs, where you have more wing surface and can produce more lift, so you don't have to land and take off at as fast of an airspeed as you would have in a high wing sweep angle like this. Now, this one is perfect. Perfect for fast flying because you have less drag. You know, I'm pretty sure the Concorde would have loved this kind of airplane design. Obviously, it has this very delta wing, which is great for fast supersonic flying, but very bad for landings and takeoffs. This airplane has to land at a million knots, literally almost 200 knots indeed. Fastest landing airliner. Uh, I've just, it doesn't matter wanted to make my point. Now, once again, let's talk about this thing here. But you know what's incredible? It actually flies. I wouldn't have thought that. We are used to planes being very symmetrical, and this is very asymmetrical, but it works for some reason. And we can maybe even try to take off even with this, you know, design. Come on. Uh, it just takes a lot more airspeed, a lot more runway. That's very normal. And a bit of tail strike. Uh, yeah, okay. Let's maybe put the wing back to the usual position. Yes, take off position. Aha! And now we have it. Oh. Anyway, as you can see, this worked brilliantly. And it's interesting. I mean, the oblique wing concept was studied kind of thoroughly in the 70s and 80s, but it was very quickly canceled after that, which is weird because it makes a lot of sense. Or does it? Everybody, I have converted the MD-80 into... Yeah, uh, okay, I mean, in the flight model, it's a little bit more... Uh, yeah, it looks a little bit strange. I don't even know if this is going to be flying or not. But in theory, we should be able to save some fuel. We have very reduced drag during cruise flight when enough airspeed is available for this airplane to maintain lift. Even in this configuration, we can save quite a lot of fuel. Um, let's just see if we I, I can fly it, though. Uh, so let's put this into a normal position all as well. Taking off full power on this beautiful airliner. We can even put the flaps out. Yes, would you see this beautiful? And we've still done a tail strike. Doesn't really matter. Landing gears coming up. Yes, we are flying indeed. And we can start off with a practical test. We are now right here at 30,000 feet. And we've kind of reached our top speed. I mean, red line is here already. 280 knots indicated. You can see it. Can't really go much faster in this airplane. Let's maybe see if we can. If we do a little bit of this. Yeah, a little bit of that. Okay, looks good. All right, it looks a little bit weird. But the airplane flies normally. And incredibly enough, we can immediately feel it. Our Mach number is definitely going up. Yeah, we can even see... Look, airspeed has increased. Look, a little bit more, a little bit more. Yes, this is quite a lot now. This is quite a lot now. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yes, and we are going faster and faster. Come on, let's go all the way now. Yes, look at this. This airplane is actually flying. And this is very much simulated. And it's funny because... Uh, yeah, okay, that's a lot of angle right here. Uh, we do have a little bit of asymmetry here. We have to very much keep the yoke to the left uh, to keep this airplane um, from turning. But you can see that we've greatly enhanced speed. What that means is, of course, you wouldn't want to fly any modern jet airplane much faster than you do already anyway. But this airplane has significantly less drag now and uses significantly less, less fuel. Uh, although our usage of trim probably isn't very good for that either, but look at this. This is amazing. But I mean, there were lots of ideas, especially also by NASA for this kind of airplane. For example, this is a parallelogram jet, which is all supposed to have a swept wing. It just... Come on. It just, uh, doesn't work. All right, that's a shame. This is an ancient model with very funny afterburners, to be fair. What the hell is that? Yeah, NASA had a so-called NASA OFW airliner research, not OnlyFans, where they had kind of ideas to build a 500-seat supersonic airliner. Maybe an airliner like this that's crashed into houses. God damn it. So will this thing ever become reality? Probably not. I'm thinking about lots of reasons why this is not very realistic for especially a supersonic airliner. Of course, you would have this wing sweep done through some sort of maybe an electric engine or through hydraulic power. Um, and that would be very heavy. The question is how much force can it actually hold? I mean, flying at supersonic speeds in this kind of 
Like, this kind of moving part seems scary. I mean, there definitely is a reason why most components like the landing gear, flaps and spoilers have a maximum speed that are quite low, actually. So these are all questions that I don't really know. I mean, and the general problem about modern aviation is that there's not really money in experimenting around anymore. Okay, I mean, you could try to make the new best air taxi or try to reinvent the Concorde, but I don't think we will see any flying wing aircraft fly anytime soon, nor will we see an airliner with this kind of wing uh, concept flying very soon. Once again, I think this configuration would be stressed so, so quickly. Now, let's maybe also go through something that could happen too. What happens if your engine breaks and you cannot move back your wing to the landing position? Now, first of all, you'd have the problem that the landing gear doesn't really come out anymore since at least in the MD-80s attached to the fuselage. Talk about being attached to things. You obviously cannot just transform an airliner that has engines uh, stuck to its wings, which is why I'm using the MD-80. One of the very few airliners, to be fair, that have this kind of T-tail design. Anyway, come on, let's try to landing now. Yeah, this is absolutely stupid. Let's try to land now. We are actually at a good speed. We really do want 220 knots. All right, honestly, this is not as dangerous. I honestly thought this plane would crash very quickly. But if you keep a good speed of like 210 knots, you're actually kind of all right. This is kind of like a flap failure, really. Look at this. We are able to land. Come on. You can do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Runway's down there. Now, I'm also not sure what this kind of contraption would, you know, weigh. You know, you know, and also how much money this kind of contraption would cost to the point where, you know, do the fuel savings really play out in the end? Come on, let's maybe now do a landing here. We can do it in outside view because I'm brave. Look at this. We have landed. Despite our wing not being proper set. And yes, we have, of course, the reverse thrust. Look at this. Look at this. So yeah, this kind of emergency doesn't pose that much of an issue. I just can't believe how well this airplane flies. Yes, it leans a bit to the left. But this is definitely not symmetrical at all. But yeah, I'm proud of you. Also, we're definitely using the wrong wing design in the first place. It should be somewhat of an oval shape. Not like this. <laughs> <laughs> great though my man's genius has once again proven that this is great videos now i want to see what happens in case of a special emergency as well take off without proper wing setting yes i mean we have figured yes this would work even on bigger airplanes in theory although once again this flight simulator does not simulate structural integrity i have no idea maybe this wing would just fall off especially um because we kept it the usual shape come on yeah and it flies all right, there we go. Looks good, looks good. We need quite a bit of more knots to actually lift off. We need quite a lot of runway. But yes, MD-80 Special Edition is flying. It's flying a little bit to the right. Stop doing that. This is amazing. The MD-80 Oblique Wing. And we are gaining speed immensely quickly here. Already here at 300 knots. This plane is significantly faster. I'm very proud of my project here. So what is the oblique wing design? Perhaps it is a concept that might be picked up on in the next few centuries. Probably not though. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters. <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Inside plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.